Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus A330 pilot and today we'll have our very first look at the Innibuilds A320neo in the Microsoft Flight Simulator Sim Update 14 Beta. We are standing in Frankfurt, we're going to do a very quick flight over to Düsseldorf where we encounter some rather bad weather, at least if the forecast is still correct. So we are going to have an exciting flight, ending up in an auto land, seeing how that feature is going to work out. So. Join me in the cockpit and we are going to get our airplane ready. We'll start with a little bit of basics here. So I'm not going to comment all the procedures that I'm doing today, much rather I'll just show you how this airplane flies and give you a little bit of the uh, detail on that. So let's power it up and let's see how that is actually going to work out. All right. Um, Let's start with a quick look into the electronic flight pack in here. As you can see, I've downloaded livery on flightsim.to. Many of them are actually already popping up. Some of them really good quality there, like this Lufthansa new livery of the Alpha India November Kilo that we are flying today. So again, follow me inside. And we are going to request our Simbrief flight plans down here, which is possible through the um, app or through the uh, electronic flight pack, I should say. Also, we're going to do our payload through there, so we are, once again, simply going to import this from Simbrief. We're going to take a little extra fuel here, let's make it 4 tons of fuel, apply that load, and we are going to make it an instant load up over here. Alright, cool, so with that done, what's our Airbus complaining about? I just heard, oh yeah, flight warning computer fault, that's gonna solve itself after a little while. These things always need a bit of time to initialize, and uh, eventually they'll start running then, eventually. Okay, cool. So, with that in background, let's go ahead and continue our cockpit preparation. So, APU fire test. Looking good. And then let's go ahead and start up the APU. It is quite cold outside. And here we go. Okay, cool. Frequencies, we're just going to leave them as they are. Then we continue with our IR alignment. One, two, and three. Should take some uh, seven, eight minutes. Yep, perfectly fine. And um, then we can set up our cockpit lights. So it is rather dark outside with uh, an overcast cloud cover today. So let's just put a couple of those lights on and see what they look like in the 320 Neo over here. This is the new LED type light, so don't be surprised if they are rather whitish compared to the um, old style amber ish colors that we can see in the uh, Rasta cockpit. Okay, cool. So that is pretty much um, that part of the setup complete. So if B setup is done as well, then we can do our aircraft acceptance. Press recall, three seconds. Normal, very good. Logbook and Mel CDL items looking good. Aircraft configuration is good. OEB. Uh, checked and with that our aircraft acceptance is performed. So Let's now go ahead and do some preliminary performance calculation Now on takeoff calculator runway 18 looks good. Can we synchronize the rest of the weather? Yes, we can Wait, um, tell you what let's just do 60 tons. That should be conservative Calculate okay looks good. We can depart with that and our actual weight. It's actually gonna be 65 1. Okay, so let's uh, just redo that one over here with uh, 66. Alright, looks good. That stuff is done. Then, oxygen quantity. Well, that's rather little 900 here. Should be more like 1900 or so, but it's still acceptable. Flaps are up, speed brake is checked. Then fuel is okay, hydraulics are okay, engine oil quantity. So for that one, I'm gonna move all the way up here and turn on the uh, fader ground power. And here we go, oil quantity, 15 left, 16 right, that is okay. On that we can turn the fader ground power back off again. Okay, cool. Final thing here, brake pressure is looking good, then park and brake off, manual brake pedal application looking good, you can see the accu pressure is decreasing every time we do this, so we just gotta keep an eye on that, but if it goes uh, too little we can always use the electric pump. 
Okay, perfect. So, without our preliminary cockpit preparations complete, we can continue with the normal setup. So, flight recorder can come on. Evacuation is going to be by a uh, captain only. Strobes auto and oven logo one. Refueling is complete, so the belts can come on over here. And the engine fire tests. Number one and number two. Okay, perfect. Right side is okay. We don't have cargo heaters in this airplane, but that's all right. We can live without. Okay, Q and H should be one zero one four if I'm not mistaken. One zero one five even. Okay. Put the constraints and then one zero one five down here. That's all looking good, that's looking good. We are in GPS mode and the date is correct as well. Perfect. Okay, cool. Then we continue down here. That weather radar is going to be a topic of a separate video for sure. Because that's a modern radar. Um, something that we haven't seen in the simulator yet, but we'll see about it. Okay, TCAS goes above and the alt reporting is on down there and let's do standard IFR squawk here 2000. All right, perfect. Then we can move on to the FMGS. Okay, cool. A320, leap engines, database is current, and align IRS. Yes, we're going to do that in a moment. So, in it. That's a little while to respond here. The A330 at least is a bit quicker there, in real life. Okay, request the data. Okay, error downloading data, then we'll have to insert it manually, that's fine. IRS in it, not gonna put anything there. It's gonna do an alignment based on the GPS position if we don't put anything manual. So, Frankfurt Düsseldorf. Yes, error downloading is copied. Alternate is gonna be Frankfurt once again. And we are. No, don't need company route. So, we are gonna be Lufthansa 4 Papa Kilo. Cost index 20, cruise level 200. So a very quick look, don't click align IRS, otherwise it's going to align it on the coordinates of the airport. Just leave it like it is, and that's all you need to do. Okay, runway 7 center for the departure, and it's going to be the Maroon 5 Echo Departure, insert. Alright, Maroon Airways, and now we are starting off our sim brief plan. So it's going to be Yankee 152. Towards Alpec, then Zulu 850. Please wait. The real one is a bit quicker there than this one. On to Zulu 854. And you can see it's automatically picking the, way, uh, the waypoints now. Okay, no intersection found. Oh, that's because it's Tango 854. That's better. You still need to carefully cross-check that the waypoints it finds automatically are correct, because sometimes there is more than one intersection between airways, but like that works pretty well. Okay, and it's going to be an ILS approach 2-3 left at Düsseldorf with a Domox 2-3 transition insert. Perfect. Secondary flight plan, copy active. So, Frankfurt. Well, let's just try that. Fox Romeo Alpha X1. Let's see what it gives us. Not in database, okay. The real one would have opened a custom window that would have allowed us to create the waypoint, so it should have opened the new waypoints um, window. i tell you what, let's just see if we can do that. Data, next page, so... In the A330 this surely looks a little different, but here we go. Okay, so Frankfurt 07 Senna slash 066 slash 25 miles. Alright, here we go. Wave on a start, Frankfurt X1. So let's go secondary. Frax 1, here we go. And from there, we are going to program an immediate return towards Frankfurt. Like so. Arrival. ILS Zulu 7 Senna. Insert. Ready. Perfect. Okay, cool. 
But that thing is done, so let's go in it, next one, and we'll just let that auto fill down there. Fuel, four tons, and that's what we've got indeed. Okay, cool. Performance? Well, we could type it manually, or we are lazy today. Send to FMGS. Here we go. Confirm takeoff data. That's it. Thank you. All right. Very cool. So next phase, don't need anything over there. That's all looking good. And the rest of it we can do in flight later on. All right, cool. And with that, we are pretty much done with our basic setup. Climbing initially 5,000. And that's it. All right, cool. Then the IRSs are aligned, so let's go ahead with a cockpit preparation checklist. Gear pins and covers removed. Fuel quantity. That's 4,020 kilogram balanced. Seatbelts on. ADRs. NAV, barrel ref, QNH 1015. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. Right, APU is running, APU bleed on, external power off. Then let's quickly go over to the electronic flight back, ground services, toggle ground power, so that's removed. Custom pushback, well, unfortunately we don't need that today because we'll be able to taxi straight out from the stand over here. So with that, I would say we are pretty much good to go. Okay, cool. Then we'll go ahead with the before start procedures. So, can we get him to arm the slides somehow? Otherwise, I'm fairly sure they're gonna do it um, when we start taxiing, but in real life we check for the slides to be armed here, just to have that mentioned. Okay, before start checklist. Parking brake, set, takeoff speeds and thrust. We've got a 149, 149, 151 and flex is 53. Windows. Closed beacon on before start checklist complete. Okay, engine to start. Let's take timing of that, see how it goes. It's an it's an A320 Neo after all, so there should be a little bit of startup delay, even though that can be minimal since our airplane has been parked for a little while, so let's see how it uh, turns out. Okay, looks like there's no startup delay in here, but, well, suppose it's fine. In the uh, Tolis A320neo, it always gives it a little bit of delay for uh, cooling anyway, but, well. On the Leap engine, it's a little bit less than on the Pratt & Whitney engines. And we got the Leap engines modeled over here, so I suppose the engine start sequence as it is. If it turns out, anyway, close to a minute or so, should be fine. Here we go, starter is closed. Engine is running up. Reaching about a minute now. And we should get about 20% or so. 19 over here, 70% N2, that's correct. And we got the avail light. Okay, engine one start. Not gonna time engine number one now. You've seen where this is going. But get me rid of that chrono, don't need that anymore. A little bit of delay here when I'm clicking it. Like, look at that. Now it starts running. Now I've stopped it. Now I'm clicking it away. Now. You can see it takes like a second to respond over here. The real one is instant with those things. Okay, engine number one is running up. Should be finished in a few moments. Starter just disengaged. As you can see, nonetheless the engine page should stay there until the avail light comes up.
and it should be ready any moment now. Let's see, avail, here it is, perfect. We don't need anti-ice for the takeoff, however we will probably need it shortly after um, going airborne, but that's gonna remain for uh, them to be settled. Okay, so trim we had 0.4 units up. Okay, after start checklist. anti iris off, ecom status, checked, pitch trim. Let's see, that's uh, roughly 30% and rudder trim neutral. After start checklist complete, then we can do the flight control check. Full up, full down, neutral, full left. Full right, neutral, and the rudder. Full left, full right, neutral. Okay, cool. Clear left side, clear right side. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any charts in the electronic flight back here, so we'll just have to live with what we have. Taxi is quite easy anyway. Straight at, right, left, and then we are at the wrong way. So. Starts rolling an idle thrust. That's what I would expect it to do. Nonetheless, I'll give a little bit of power here to expedite crossing that service road. Right, and back to idle. Pretty strong response I feel there on the tiller. This is like not a lot of input, you can see. It's not a lot of input on my um, joystick either, so it's certainly more responsive than the uh, PMDG or the Phoenix, for example. Okay, so I don't have any updates on the takeoff briefing. Everything pretty much stays exactly as we originally um, calculated it. We're just waiting for the cabin before we can read the B or the uh, taxi checklist. So, very small point there on the uh, viewpoint. I do find it to be a little bit low. Normally, you should be able to see the uh, top of the glare shield very slightly. Pretty much like so. But as you can see, that is much too high now for our instruments. So, this is certainly not a correct viewpoint for an Airbus. So, might be something with a model that is uh, not entirely correct up there in the front. Um, the viewpoint, I tried a little bit to uh, get it right, but something's not entirely correct here. Because I should be able to see the top of the glare shield. While the rest of it seems to be, well, rather correct. I mean, it should be seen a little higher. Something like that. But, yeah, as you can see... No way to see the uh, top of the glass shield like that. Okay, our cabin is ready in the meantime, so let's do a taxi checklist. Flight controls, checked. Flap setting, config 1 plus F, radar and predictive wind shear, on and auto, engine start selector, norm, eco memo, takeoff, no blue. Taxi checklist, complete. Just in case you're wondering why I'm reading the checklist and answering, but only looking at the main panel over here, we can basically see everything we need to on the main panel, like if the engine start selector was in ignition, you'd see ignition standing down here, like so. And see, now you have it here. So basically, we don't check the switch position, but we check the system's position. This one I should have put on, though. So now, when reading the uh, radar and predictive wind shear um, challenge, over here you can see the radar indications. So your radar is on, and if the predictive wind shear was off, you would see an amber message over there on the ECAM. So you can basically check everything straight from the um, displays and don't, don't need to look around in the cockpit to get the checklist items right. Okay, cabin crew, prepare for departure. That's going on, that's going on. It's really going tight into those turns, I like it. Let's see how tight we can do it. Let's see if we can do a realistic lineup. Here we go. Oh yeah, we can. Look at that. That's what a maximum tiller deflection should look like. I even started steering a little early here. Alright, lineup checklist. Take off runway, 7 center full length, TCAS. That is not showing yet. Oh yeah, and here's the reason why. 
Alright, Chicas, Tara. Yes, it says TA only, but that's fine. Packs 1 and 2 on lineup checklist complete. Okay, so takeoff clearance is received. Landing lights going on, nose light going on, and here we go. Takeoff. Nice howling there of the engines. Manflex 53, SRS, Autothrust Blue. Okay, thrust set. Do note the runway mode can t sometimes take rather long to engage, and often it doesn't engage at all. So, that is quite realistic over here that we don't get a runway mode. 100 knots. V1, rotate. Lovely. I need to pull the cross exactly where I need to pull it. Okay, nav, positive climb, gear up. Okay, that was a little bit too much pitch. Let's pitch it down a little. There was quite a loss of airspeed there as well. But look at how the wind shifted. We had like a 10 knot headwind or so initially. Now it shifted to a 10 knot tailwind. So that, that's like a 20 knot negative wind shear there. Right, let's put the autopilot on, see how it's gonna fly. Autopilot 1. Climb. Thrust climb. That looks quite lovely down there, doesn't it? Flap zero? Speed checked. Flap zero. Okay then, climbing flight level 100. Or 130 should be. Here we go. Let's see that from the outside for a second. That's actually looking quite awesome. Frankfurt's looking great down there, and the, and so is the Airbus. Sounds well. Can't really comment on the sounds in flight, so no comment on that. From the cockpit, however, it definitely sounds believable. If it is correct, I really can't comment on that. Okay, then, set standard. Standard cross-check, passing flight level 5.3 now. Checked. Okay, 9 degrees, about to enter some clouds, engine NTI is on. And here we go, engine NTI is on. Okay, let's see how the directs work. Once out of 5,000, with a good rate of climb, they, they'll usually give you something in Frankfurt. So let's go direct to RPEC. So, something you'll notice over here is that any builds have modeled the more modern avionics suit on the Airbus, where the direct page looks quite different from what it used to in the um, older Airbuses. So this is fully realistic, it's a different set than what is modeled, for example, on um, the Phoenix or on the FS Labs. What is not modeled at the moment seems to be radial in, radial out, and a beam point. So we just got to do it like that. But direct to RPEC, and uh, it's pretty much doing what it's supposed to do. So just to show you one more time, you go into the direct page, you hit the waypoint you want to take. So for example, RPEC, and then up here, it gives you that little star next to RPEC. So in order to execute the direct, you just hit that thing once more. And now we're going direct to the waypoint in question. Okay, passing 10,000. Let's do lights off. Also, we're out of the ice, so let's put the engine anti-ice off. 
yeah, let's go seatbelts off. Seems to be smooth. We'll keep the constraints, um, because if you go to airports, once again, you get the entire set of airport that simulator has without any filtering or so. So I'm certainly staying on constraints over here. And uh, finally, nothing in the RATNAV, secondary we can copy the active, and looking over here we've got Optimum 391, Max 395, so we are looking good the way we are. Okay, cool. So that's that. That's kind of cruise level, 200 it's going to be. And I'm not going to take anything higher today because you can see we're almost in it, sort of already. Just about some hundred miles or so to go. This one says 166, but don't let yourself be fooled by that. Um, we've got the entire approach transition in there. Let's have a look on the plan mode. See what that looks like. Okay, here we go. And should be able to stroll through the plan. And we are. Okay, that discontinuity can go over there. Alright, and that is what our approach transition looks like. Going to do a couple of edits over there, but before we do that, let's have a quick look into the climb performance of the plane. So, Airbuses are known for notoriously not climbing as well as uh, Boeings do, for example. So, 3000 feet a minute, 64 tons, seems alright to me. Keep in mind we're at a very low weight with um, such a short flight, so 3000 feet a minute does seem alright. Even though, for those of you who've got X-Plane, it would certainly be worth cross-checking with the Tolis A320neo on uh, how good or not this is. Okay, cool. So, let's just go back down here. What I'll do, ATC normally is going to give you a direct Delta Lima 455 and thereafter a final approach fix at some point throughout the flight. So, I'll just insert that. 455, remove the disco. That one we gotta keep up here, but there was another disco on the top, but I removed that already. Okay, very good. Alright, finally, anticipating the shortcut, let's take Domox at flight level 100. Here we go. And that is looking good. I wonder why we're getting an amber star, though. Shouldn't be amber, it should be uh, magenta, since I don't see any reason why the airplane should not be able to make that constraint. Okay, got 2,000 feet to go. Then let's go to vertical speed. And then we've got about 1000 to go, so let's go VS plus 1000. Seems to me like the airplane takes a little long to respond. The real one would be a tad quicker. Not too much, because G-loading still matters, but this one takes a little while to respond to the input. And since we're above the clouds, let's just have a look at the cockpit with all those lights turned off. Just want to see what it looks like. Right, that's going, and that's going. Alright, so this is what the cockpit of the A320 Neo by Inibuilds looks like without any lights on. And the colors seem pretty much spot on. A little bit dark down here, maybe. Like, you can see quite a color difference between main panel and the pedestal, that's certainly not as bad in the real plane. And there's quite a bit of reflection there on the overhead panel. I have not seen it to be that great in the A330, that's for sure. Haven't seen it to be that great in the um, Airbus I fly in real life. Obviously, simulator might also play a role over here. Have a quick look around on the kind of options and features we've got available. So the um, sunshades are pretty dark in here. Let's see, the EFB is not blocking the um, sunshades. That's pretty cool. So that stuff works. Even though it is a little hard to find, but when you got it, then it's there. Can we pull out the compass? No, looks like we can't. That doesn't seem to be uh, simulated here. Alright, apart from that, what else do we have? Well, most important feature of every Airbus. The table's working. So you can make any pilot happy with that. 
Let's get rid of that again. Now comes the second most important feature. Look at that. The footrests are working. And those really are important. Because you can put your feet up here, but if you if you put them down there, beneath the um, paddles, you might easily accidentally hit that paddle in flight. And believe me, you don't want a rudder input like that in flight. All right. So that is... Um, can we move the seat? Nah, looks like the controls aren't animated there, so looks like that doesn't work. But that's alright for me. What we can move though is the armrests. Click spot is hidden down here, but here you go. Here you've got the armrest. Okay. So, let's take another quick shortcut, direct to Domox. So again, direct page, let's find Domox, here it is, and insert. It's interesting that when it returns to the flight plan page, it should return to here. And most importantly, it shouldn't show you the waypoint prior to the turning point. So, it should work like that. So, it seems to me like there is one waypoint too many up there on the um, flight plan page. Can't scroll any further, but that's what it's doing. Okay, here we go. So, it actually gives us an amber circle around Domux, meaning that it's unable to meet the restriction. There is really no reason why it should be unable for it, so I do suggest, or I do expect this got something to do with um, a bug. But keep in mind, we're looking at one of the first versions over here. It's scheduled to release at some point in December, so there's still some time for them to do that stuff. Right. Dashboard, let's have a look. Echo Delta Delta Lima, what does the latest weather look like? Oh, nope, that was wrong. Echo Delta Delta Lima. <laughs> oh, lovely. It's a little pity that you can't actually see what you're typing with a keyboard over here blocking the view. Here we go. Alright, so it's variable 2 knots, 3400 meters visibility, broom overcast 409 degrees. Over 81016, becoming 030 at 5,000, 5, broken 500. Well, it's gonna be a little tailwind, but let's take runway 23 left anyway, like we've planned it. QNH is gonna be a 1016, let's go ahead and pre select that. Here we go, 1016 is in. And then we can also do the FMS setup. So, flatland page is pretty much done already. Ratnav. Well, we can take Dusseldorf, Delta Unit from Sierra, and... Oh, nothing, not in database. What's that? Let's try another one. Bravo Alpha Mike. Yeah, that one's there. Okay, interesting. Did they change the name of that NAF-8? No, there it is. Delta Unit from Sierra. Okay, not sure why that's going on. Maybe I did a typo. Let's try that one more time. Delta Uniform Sierra. Not in database. Interesting. Well, we'll keep it on auto tune then. Alright, progress page. Düsseldorf, two, three, left. Gonna put that in. Performance. Cabin descent rate is gonna be fine. Target descent speed is fine as well. So, QNH, 1016. Temperature, 9 degrees. The wind was variable 2, so we're just gonna enter a calm wind down here. Minimums 340 on that approach. And then we'll take config 3 for the landing. And we gotta select that on the GPWS as well. Alright. So, we are going to fly this one into an auto land, but let's configure for missed approach as well. MSA, in case of missed approach with an engine out 2400, the rest will leave automatic. Your prediction looks good. Secondary flight plan will set up for an ILS approach 2 3 right in case we get a last minute runway change. And that has 360, I believe. Can't be bothered to look it up now. 340, 360, either is going to work with the clouds at 400. All right, auto brakes uh, low. Let's tell you what, let's go auto brake medium so that we can shorten our taxi time a little bit. And that's it. Alright, take us into the... Can we, 
can't I put it into below? There it is, okay. Oh, it's a little difficult to see from the other side, but it's fine like the way it is. Alright, perfect. So with that, we are all set up for our descent. About to reach the TD as well, so let's go ahead and go down. We'll start at flat level 100. Descend alt flat level 100 blue. So what it should do now is on the progress page, give us the VDEF. It does. And it should descend at a thousand feet a minute until the VDEF starts coming down at the actual top of descent as well. But here it is. Frost idle. Right, going down, and that's it. So, level off is past Domox actually. So, this should obviously be right on Domox since we've got a fully managed descent. The plane had sufficient time to calculate everything, so something is uh, not quite right with the managed descent profile over here. But, that, seeing that we are in a beta with a work in progress, I do suppose it's fine the way it is for now. Obviously, later on, that will need a correction. Alright, cool. So, with all of that done, let's go ahead and tidy the cockpit up a little bit again. Don't need any of that stuff over here anymore. That's perfect. Okay, cool. I'll keep the lights out for now. Let's see how that's gonna look like when we enter the clouds, and then we can still do a little bit of our setup. Talking about what it looks like, let's just zoom really far in and have a look at the textures that we've got on the plane over here. If we go really close like now, we can start seeing them become a little bit unclear. But look at the button over here, for example. That's, again, really, really good on the ATC light. No Autoland light. Again, hey, you, nice. It actually starts flashing when you click on it like the real one does. So that is quite cool. Let's keep an eye on the descent speed over here. We are following the profile and the speed... Well, the wind is a very slight headwind component there, so... I certainly wouldn't expect the target or the actual speed to go too high above the uh, target in the middle. That normally only happens when the wind slightly deviates from the actual flight conditions, but at the moment, pretty steady down there, so that looks fine to me. Passing 15,000, seatbelt signs are coming on again. Nice to have that little delay, by the way. You could see how I put the switch on, then like half a second later you heard the ding, and only then you saw the seatbelt come on in the uh, ECAM. That's quite cool, and that is exactly as the real one is, by the way. Okay, so let's see what's gonna happen when we actually pass over at Domux, and what altitude it's actually gonna be at over there. That's going to be interesting to um, see how that develops. Because I, I have a suspicion on why the altitude target is a little bit late, but let's see what's going to happen. Because um, during my time working for different flights and companies as a tester and advisor, yep, this is exactly what I expected. Once you get to the initiation of the turn, that's where the calculation messed up. That's something that I saw with a lot of different developers already that they started, that they had to work on enough calculations in turns. That's always a little bit messy in the flight simulation, it seems. Must be rather difficult to actually um, calculate that stuff. Okay, let's take a shortcut. Direct Delta Lima 455. Insert that, and we are definitely going to need the speed brake now. Let's see how high we are, actually. Oh, 6,200. That seems to be a little very high to me. How many track miles do we have left? 30 miles, so something like 9... Well, maybe 8,000 feet should be spot on right now. So, plus 5,700 seems to be quite a lot. Tell you what we're going to do, though. Let's put the altitude down, 3,000, set Q&H, 1016. So, approaching level 100, we should start reducing our speed towards 250. Now it's doing it. That was a little bit high, and... Why well, is going towards 220? That doesn't make sense. Should be 250. Speed limit exceeded. That's clear. Okay, manage 250. So why is the target down there 220? That doesn't make a lot of sense. That definitely doesn't make a lot of sense there. Okay, well, we'll just let it do that. And in the meantime, we'll do our checks for low 100s. 
so here we go and that is our checks basically completed so set altimeter 1016 cross check passing 9000 now tell you what let's give it selected 250 knots so that we're actually getting down and then let's see what we're going to get out of the descent performance of this plane in the meantime let's read the approach checklist barrel ref QNH1016 seatbelts on minimum barrel 340 auto brake medium engine start selector norm approach checklist complete well, that's interesting. Why is it doing 265 and accelerating? Should be doing 250 now. So that is going a little bit quick over here. Let's see what happens if I just modify it slightly. Let's say 255 just for the sake of testing. And we're entering clouds. Engine NTI is on. So it's definitely flying too fast. I have a feeling I know what it's doing. In, if you were doing managed speed, it would allow 20 knots faster and slower. Looks like in selected, it's doing the same over here. That is incorrect behavior. It shouldn't do that. In selected speed, it should fly precisely what you select. Only in managed, it should go um, between 20 knots faster or slower. Right, let's go back to manage though. Still, I don't know why it's doing 220 as a target. Um, it shouldn't. Well, I have a suspicion. There used to be a 220 restriction on the uh, star, so maybe it tried to follow that. But, well. In any way, the descent performance itself, like 3000 feet a minute, looks pretty much fine to me with the speed brakes out. And it should be about half that much with the speed brakes retracted, so something like 1500, 1800, that would seem a proper speed for the descent otherwise. Interesting over here, the decel point is after the final approach fix, and I've got no idea why the final fix got 3000 feet in there, that is incorrect. Maybe that's the reason, or that's part of the reason for an incorrect VNAV profile, but in any case, the decel point should be a little earlier, I'd say. But what I'm gonna do, let's activate the approach phase manually there. Speed limit exceeded, well, no more. Okay then, flaps one, and we can retract the uh, speed brake again. Speed checked, flap one. Right. Lockstar, Catherine Yule, Autopilot 1 and 2, Glatzo Blue, and Glatzo Star now, so let's go 4,000 feet. Go around altitude 4,000 feet set. Okay, let's help it decelerate a little bit more down there. Glide slope. Just want to get below the uh, flap speed over there. Lock. Right, now the engine starts spooling, so let's go ahead and retract the spoilers. Interesting, we're getting a speed brake flashing message. That should only happen when the speed brake's still out. And that should be based on the lever position as far as I'm aware, not on the um, actual control surface position. But it's fine. Alright, so we're at, in Is flaps fine? 1 on the S speed, intercepting, and at 2000 feet we're gonna go flaps 2. And that should be our normal flap extension schedule on the A320. So let's see how that's going to work out. We're going to do a flap 3 landing over here. Normally with auto lands you would consider doing flaps full because it lowers the deck angle a little bit by like 2 degrees and therefore makes the lights of the runway visible a bit earlier. But since we are just doing a test over here for um, seeing how the auto land performance is going to work, for that reason I'm doing flap 3 anyway, because I want to see, I want to finally have an Airbus that's able to do a config 3 approach. Okay, flaps 2, speed checked, flaps 2. Once the flaps are out, we're going to lower the landing gear.
Here they go, gear down. It's 10 degrees right now, but we are slowing down, so we are losing speed as well. Cabin's still not ready, let's give him a ding. For some reason, all developers seem to model it like you need to ding the cabin crew in order to get the cabin ready. That's not normally how it would work. Okay, quite a bit of drag, that is good. And then we can go flaps 3, speed check flap 3, landing checklist, ECA memo, landing no blue, landing One checklist nine. complete. That's checked, but a little early. Right, thrust is slowly coming up, so we are pretty much stabilized going through the gate down here. Alright, good. So, let's see how it is going to perform. Should be looking at a pitch of roughly four and a half, five degrees, something like that on the final. Slightly below the glide, correcting, but looks like it's stabilizing, stabilizing somewhere around just below five degrees, so that's quite cool. Yeah, pitch is looking good, thrust is looking good, land, runway is inside down there. So let's see how Autoland is going to perform. Minimum. Continue. That was a little bit firm for my taste. But anyway, spoilers. Reverse green diesel. It's oscillating a little bit left and right. Manual brakes. Okay. Let's take the exit and welcome to Düsseldorf. Alright then, off to the gate and then there we are. Here we go. Okay, cool. So, that's gonna go out, that's gonna go out, that goes out, flaps up. We'll start the APU straight away. Weather is basically good enough that we don't need anti-ice anymore, so let's turn that off as well. Alright, cool. After landing checklist, radar and predictive wind shear, off, after landing checklist complete. and. Just the opposite to what we had on our departure. Now you no longer got the weather radar indication here. You got the predictive wind shear off and amber down there. So that's pretty much exactly what we are looking for. All right, cool. So I'm um, going into the gate and then that's gonna be it. So what's my first impression on my first Inibuilt A320 Neo flight? Well, it is quite a good aircraft. Most of the SOP worked quite fine. There is a little bit of stuff that they can fine tune a bit, but again, it's the first beta version that we are flying over here, so no surprises that it isn't perfect yet. However, most of the standard operating procedures, is, it did quite fine. A little bit of enough stuff, but that's going to be worked on, I'm sure. And apart from that, I am quite happy with it as it is at the moment. It's certainly a fun aircraft to fly for a default airplane. It is very, 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 very good. Pretty much close to the A310, I would say, on a similar level. Probably a bit more advanced, even, seeing that stuff like um, the LNAV worked a little bit better, and you can just see they probably took the A310 code and advanced on it, which is exactly the thing to do. 
Overall, a very good first impression, I have to say. Sounds are good, model is looking good, with the exception that you can't look on the top of the glare shield there. Hopefully something they're gonna work on, and the first impression is a very good one. I'm sure I'm going to start liking this airplane a lot as my go-to A320neo for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alright, turning into the gate. And all I can say is well done Inibuilds, this is a very good Airbus simulation and honestly, in my opinion, they could even have sold this one for a couple of euros, maybe like 30 or 40 euros, rather than just um, including it in the standard sim. So again, over there, just like the A310, very well done to Inibuilds and thank you very much to Microsoft for providing that one free of charge for us. Okay, cool. Park and brake is set, APU is available, then let's do bleed on and engines off. Well, thank you very much. Cabin crew, all doors in park. Engines coming down, beacon off. Let's see, are they eventually going to disarm the slides, or do I have to do that manually, maybe? Is there any button here to arm or disarm slides? Don't think there is, huh? I'll tell you what. Let's open the one left, see what happens. Oh, now they disarm the slides. Okay. Well, that's it. That's fine for me as well. Okay, parking checklist. Park and breaker trucks, set, engines, off, wing light, off, fuel pumps, off, parking, checklist complete. And that's it my friends, the first flight on the Inibuilds A320neo. Again, my first impression, if you just forward it to the end in order to hear it, was given in the um, taxi in. So have a look at that, a very promising aircraft, I'm sure this is going to be this is going to turn out to be just great. Thank you for watching everyone, and I see you all again on the next one. In the meantime, don't forget to like the video if you did like it, as it does help with the uh, YouTube algorithms. Like if you did like the video, comment to let me know what you think of it, and don't forget to subscribe for more. If you really like what I'm doing over here, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and see you all on the next one.